Well, one of the first things Donald Trump has announced in his second presidential term is a $500 billion investment into artificial intelligence. The money will be used to create a new company called Stargate. This is a bid to grow AI infrastructure in the United States. And this is really the new frontier. Joining me now is Industry and Science Minister Ed Husick. Ed, I uh, know that you understand this. Not only understand it, but you're certainly exercised by it. This is uh, being your focus and you understand it more uh, than most most in that parliament. It does seem like this is passing us by a little bit. When we talk about big data centres, AI data centres, where are they being built and how are they going to be powered? Because we now have the most expensive electricity in Southeast Asia. Well, g'day, Laura. Yeah, I think artificial intelligence has been developed since the end of the uh, Second World War. It's been on a very long run up. Uh, it has gone ahead in leaps and bounds and it promises a huge boost to economies. It's, we know in our daily lives it's made a difference in making things simpler. There are about 650 Australian firms that are developing and progressing on AI development in this country as we speak. And there have been estimates that if we get this right on AI and the way we use it, it could provide up to a $600 billion benefit by uh, 20. 30, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, and so you're right, we need to invest in it. It's why, in our National Reconstruction Fund, we set aside a billion for critical technologies like AI to invest more in firms. Uh, and late last year, uh, ahead of the announcement that you saw in the US, we said we want to develop an AI capability plan to be able to scale up our investment and activity in artificial, Australia, in yeah. artificial intelligence in Australia. And next week I'll be bringing together business leaders and also union leaders as well to talk about how we can better use AI in the Australian national interest. And to your point about data centres, uh, they are, they'll do a lot of work in terms of AI, but a lot of other firms outside of that will progress it. We need to bring them together. Mm. And with uh, data centres, I've got one being built right in my neighbourhood uh, in Marsden Park by CDC, a huge data centre. Uh, they are being built in different parts of the country by local and international firms that recognise Australia is a great place to do business. Certainly, but what is fundamental to AI, and I'm talking about AI, yes, I admit that AI has been developed over the last 100 years, absolutely, but chat GTP, GPT and other apps like that are game changers. Um, and they require a lot of energy. Have we got the wrong energy system at the moment to be able to power AI in Australia? Because it is hugely energy intensive and we no longer have cheap energy or particularly reliable energy. I think your point is absolutely right. What you've seen with ChatGPT, it's that family or well, that, that section of AI, generative AI, that has basically taken that huge step mm. change that you've uh, notice that we've all seen, and that does, as you rightly point out, use a lot of energy. Uh, with a lot of data centres, they do think ahead about how they can add to energy supply, and they're particularly focused on renewable energy sources to help do that. And so you are seeing data centres think ahead, and that will be critical. Uh, it is something that we do focus on as a government, as part of the work decarbonisation plans. I'm responsible for two regarding the built environment and the industrial sector. Mm -hmm. That has absolutely been a focus of ours to work with industry to fast track the development of renewable energy supply, which a lot of these centres want. They want to be able to have that. Mm. So they generate the energy from solar, store it in batteries, use it when they need to. Uh, but it's been a big issue, as you rightly point out. And I want to ask you about the anti-Semitic attacks we've seen in Sydney's eastern suburbs and more broadly in Melbourne. There has been, you know, mm. a suggestion that the Labor Party has been too afraid to um, show leadership in this area out of fear of upsetting voters in Western Sydney seats like yours ahead of an election. Can you speak to that? Well, I don't accept that for one minute. I mean, you and I, Laura, have spoken about these issues for years. Anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are corrosive to our social fabric. You and I have spoken about this, and it's been something I've focused on personally, because I want Australians to be able to live their life free of fear from practising their faith. 
and the anti-Semitic attacks we've seen, particularly in eastern Sydney, are completely unacceptable. And we need to stand as one to, to say, as a community, we are determined to stamp this out. We will throw the book at people who are trying to create fear uh, on, that, uh, on that front. Uh, and to be able to show uh, the rest of the country we stand as one. An attack on one is an attack on yeah. all, frankly. And we need to be able to step up on that. Now, our political opponents have been making uh, a political uh, campaign uh, out of this. My view is anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, I don't care what it is, if it's you're picking on people because of what they believe, not on. Uh, but if Peter Dutton wants to look at his record at not banning Nazi salutes, didn't do anything about it, they <laughs> opposed moves on anti-vilification and hate speech, uh, they didn't do anything on that. And Peter Dutton was part of a government, remember, that wanted to change the Racial Discrimination Act when George Brandis was saying, you know, people have a right to be a bigot. And now, we're gonna, we stood strong on that absolutely. for years. Yeah, we're going to get to Peter Dutton in just a moment, but I just want to quickly pick you up on something you said. You talked about Islamophobia, and that is as corrosive as anti-Semitism, absolutely. But at the moment, is Islamophobia as bad as anti-Semitism? So in the month straight after the October 7 attack, the Islamophobia register detected a 1,300% increase in Islamophobic behaviour. Uh, and it indicated over the course of the last year uh, over a 500% okay. increase in those incidents. There have been 2,000 anti-Semitic uh, acts over that time uh, as well. You know, from my perspective, they are both bad. They both have to be stamped out. Uh, because they are designed to create fear in our community mm. and to be able to threaten the way of life for people. And I stand strongly on stamping both of those, those things out, but particularly having seen in the last few weeks the anti-Semitic behaviour that's been carried on uh, and the work of the agencies to get to the bottom of it. And I commend the New South Wales Government for the work it has done in conjunction with the Australian Federal Police, and we need to keep that, that up. Uh, to stamp this out. Ed, really appreciate your time today. Uh, we'll leave you there in your uh, high hey, vest here. and let you get well, back to it. <laughs> well, we're talking about a $2 billion investment in green aluminium that's oh, important thought, for blue collar I, workers I thought I in gave Western you that Sydney in. and in... <laughs> when I talked about broadly about manufacturing. Yeah, yes, the well, <laughs> well, well, here in, here in Capital in Western Sydney, where they're taking yeah. aluminium that's been made in both Tomago in the Hunter Valley yeah. and in Boyne up in, uh, up in northern Queensland in Gladstone. Uh, okay. But we've invested $2 billion in a green aluminium production credit to make sure we keep making Australian-made aluminium. It's a big deal here. From Western Sydney to Weeper, massive deal. We want to make Australian products. Oh, you're giving me election uh, year vibes already. Uh, it's going to be around the corner in a campaign proper oh, before we know it. For shame, Laura <laughs> Jay. Ed Husick, we'll leave it there. We'll speak to you again soon.